We are again asked to add a lot of numbers. We should notice that the numbers increase by the same amount, namely by 7. And that's going to be important. Such a sequence that the terms in it increase by uh, the same amount is called an arithmetic sequence. And the, the method that we saw with little Gauss only works with arithmetic sequences. So in this particular method, we're going to say, OK, this sum is x. And then we're going to repeat the, the entire line. But the numbers to be added, we, we line them up backwards. So the, in the first line, the last number was 2018. That's the first one. And then it should decrease by 7. So 2011 is the next one. And then 2004. And the last number in the second row should be what was the first number in the first row. So we just lined up these numbers backwards. We are imitating what little Gauss did. We're going to add up all these numbers. Then at the end, we're going to divide by 2 because this is twice the sum that we are looking for. So every time we're going to apply this Gaussian method, there is going to be an easy question and an increasingly difficult question. The easy question is, what is the sum in each column? Well, in the first column, it's going to be 2048. And this whole thing works because, because this is an arithmetic progression. When we step to the right, the number in the first row increases by 7. The number in the second row decreases by 7. Therefore, the sum is preserved. So we already know that we're adding 2048 to itself many, many times. Well, that's just multiplication. The question that is increasingly difficult is how many columns are we dealing with? I'm going to show you two different methods. But first, here is what you should not do. If you say, OK, I'm going to, I'm going to subtract 2018 and 30 and divide the difference by 7, you're going to be off. Let me just show you why. If we say we have to find 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20, there are four numbers here. But what do we get if we apply that technique? 20 minus 5 is 15 divided by 5 is 3. So we're off. So instead of that method, I'm going to show you two methods. One of them is because basically we are at the point in algebra where we're applying two-step equations. And this can be an application of two-step equations. The other solution for finding the number of columns is just really neat, elegant. So I want to show you that one too. OK. So first, to 1, we want to associate 30. To 2, we want to associate 37. To 3, we want to associate 44. And if we could figure out what this association is, we could apply it backwards here. We cannot use x anymore because x is taken. So we're going to use n for the number of columns. Because this sequence has numbers that increase by 7, while the labels increase by 1, this will have to do with multiples of 7. If we look at the multiples of 7, this is 1 times 7, this is 2 times 7, 3 times 7, 4 times 7. As we increase the label by 1, the multiples of 7 will increase by 7. So we cannot get away from that. It's just we're going to have to adjust it a little bit. 1 times 7 is 7, but we want 30. So we're off. Let's add the difference. 1 times 7 plus what number? Well, 1 times 7 is 7, and so we have to add 23 to that. 2 times 7 is 14. We would like to get 37 out of this. So 37 minus 14 is 23 again. And that kind of makes sense, because if we increase the label by 1, this number here, the multiple says 7, will be increased by 7. So, so we're going to be off always. But on the plus side, we're going to be off by the same number every single time. So if we say 3 times 7 plus 23 is 21 plus 23, that is 44. Basically, this is going to keep. If we take 4 times 7 plus 23, that's going to be 7 larger than the previous one. That's 28 plus 23, that is 51. So basically, we have established a connection between this number and this number. And that is the following. 7 times the label plus 23 equals to the, to the number in the sequence. Terrible notation. Sorry. And remember, remember, the goal is to find this number here. Well, now we know what the connection is, right? If you multiply the label number by 7 and add 23 to that, we should get 2018. Well, this is a two-step equation for n, right? What happens to the unknown? Multiply by 7, add 23. So we're going to undo them in the reverse order. We're going to first subtract 23. So we get 1995. And then we divide by 7. So n is 285. So what we figured out is that when we add these numbers, 
that add, each column adds up to 248, we have 285 many columns. And so the rest is easy. The sum is going to be 2048 multiplied by 285 and then divided by 2. And that is 291,840. This is one method to determine how many columns are there. There is another one that's very neat. I learned it from my colleague Linda, and that goes like this. We're going to list these numbers, but notice that instead of adding them, we're just listing them with commas in between, because at this point, all we want to know is how many numbers are there here. We still have to notice the magic number 7, that is the amount that each number increases from the previous one. Because once we notice that, we would like to say, well, we're counting, but I don't like to count 7, 14, 21. I would like to count with increasing by 1. So it would be nice if I could divide these numbers by 7, but they're not divisible. We will not change the number of numbers if we subtract 2 from every single number. Why 2? Because I want to make them divisible by 7. We can also add 5. It doesn't matter which, which one we do. We're just going to subtract 2. So then 30 will become 28, 37 will become 35, 44 becomes 42. And notice this is no accident that now the numbers that we are listing are divisible by 7. The last number is 2016. And <coughs> Yes, we did change the numbers, but all we want to know is how many numbers, and that was not changed. So now that we transform these numbers so they are divisible by 7, we're going to harvest the benefits of that and divide every number by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4, 35 divided by 7 is 5, 42 divided by 7 is 6, 7, and so on. And 2016 divided by 7 is 288. Okay, so now that we divided by 7, we have achieved what we wanted, that now the numbers are increasing by 1. Well, that's how we like to count. But it's still a little weird because we don't count starting at 4. We like to start counting at 1. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to subtract 3 from every single number. Because then 4 will be transferred to 1, 5 will be 2, 6 will be 3, and so on. And this would be 285. And when we list the numbers starting from 1, increasing by 1, the last number is the number of numbers. So we have 285 many numbers. Thank you for watching.